All right, so on, on your tables, you should have, and those little red cups, if you take that stuff out, the little cubes in that cup should match what this question is talking about with the marbles, right? I didn't want to give you marbles because those just roll all over the place. Um, so you should have three yellow, two blue, seven green, and five red little cubes. If you don't, let me know because they've been bouncing all over the place today. Everybody good? So we're going to use these to kind of look at what's happening with this. We're not actually necessarily going to figure out the probabilities by drawing them because that's a different kind of probability. That's experimental probability. And when we just calculate it based on what's there, that's your theoretical probability. For instance, if you were to um, flip a coin, the probability of getting heads is one half, right? Well, if you were to flip a coin ten times, does that mean you're for sure going to get five heads and five tails? No. I mean, you might get heads every single time, right? I mean, it's more likely that you wouldn't, but you might. Um, if you flipped the coin a million times, would you get half heads and half tails? Probably, maybe, but probably not. But would it be closer to an average of one half? Right? Because the more you do it, the more you get closer to that. Okay. So they're there just for us to kind of think about what's happening, but us actually drawing them, that's not how we're going to get our our probabilities today. All right, so this says we've got the bag with those colors. Without looking at the color, you reach in the bag and you select one or more. So before we can find those probabilities, what do we have to know? How many? Okay, so how many total do you have? Seventeen? I'll agree with that. Okay, you can either count what you have in front of you or add those numbers up either way, but there's seventeen. Okay, so the probability of getting a red marble. Well, I know there's a total of 17. How many red ones are there? Five. So five out of 17. Can I reduce that? Nope. And that's simple probability, which, again, past this, you're probably not even going to be able to look at. We're not going to do it all. All right, so now let's look at some of the compound stuff. We're going to probability of a green marble, then a yellow marble, without replacement. Okay, so that without replacement, does that make it independent or dependent? Dependent, because if you don't put it back, what happens the second time is dependent on what happened the first time. So it's dependent. Okay, so I've got two, thi two things that I'm going to draw, right? And I'm going to multiply them together. So green, how many green do we have? Seven out of a total of 17. And then yellow? Three out of 17. Okay, so before I go to... Is it 17? It's 16, right? Somebody said 17. I just wrote it down. Okay, 16. Why is it 16 and not 17? Because it's without replacement, exactly. All right, so when um, before I go to multiply, can I reduce this at all? No, I can't reduce vertically, and I can't reduce across either, so I can't reduce. Um, now, I can just go off to the side and do some scratch work and multiply 17 times 16, but remember, we want to try and start... Thinking more along the lines of how do these numbers relate to each other. Doesn't this just really mean that I want 17 16s, right? I want 16 17 times or vice versa. So then let's just think about if it was 16 times 16, that would be easy because we should know what 16 squared is. What is it? 256. Okay. <clears throat> People have been struggling with that all day, which means I'm going to go back and start giving all those little quizzes again. But 16 times 16 is 256. Now, obviously, that's not the answer. But um, it's 256. Well, that's 16 sixteens. I want 17 sixteens. So if I just take this and add one more 16 to it, that'll give me my actual number. Does that make sense? So instead of having to actually multiply things, you understand the 16 squared, add one more to that. And what's 256 plus 16? 272. Right? And then 7 times 3 is 21. Can I reduce that? And here's the key. If you can't reduce it at all before you multiply crossways or vertically, then you can't reduce now. All right. So if you make sure that it's reduced before you start, you don't have to worry about the big obscure numbers that you're not sure of and whether or not they reduce. That's it. That's your answer, 21 over 272. Everybody okay with that? All right. So then probability of a green marble, then yellow marble with replacement, is that dependent or independent? independent, right, because you put it back, so it doesn't really matter what you got the first time. So, again, two events. Green marble, there are seven of them out of a total of 17. 
And then yellow, how many? Three out of 17. This time it's 17 because we put it back. Now, can I reduce it all? No. What is 17 squared? It's 289. I think I heard somebody say that. Here's the thing. If you didn't know it or if it's a different obscure number, let's say this was 57 times 56 and you had to actually go find it out. Well, instead of having to do 57 times 57, you just know that there's one more that you need there. If this is 17 sixteens, I'm sorry, if this is 17 sixteens, it's also 16 seventeens, right? And you want 17 of them. So if you take this, add 17 to it, then you can get 289 there also. So again, kind of understanding how they relate to each other, it can save you from doing a lot of work. And then 21 in the numerator, can I reduce that? Nope. Okay. And so it's 21 out of 289. Alrighty. So then 26, green marble, then green marble with replacement. So independent or dependent? Independent. Okay. Two events. So remember, you make the number of blanks for how many events you have. Green marble, well, again, there's seven of them out of 17. Then green marble, so what does my next fraction look like? Seven out of 17, because I put it back, right? Can I reduce that at all? Nope, they're all prime numbers, so that's nice. So this is going to give me 49 over 289. Then green marble, green marble without replacement, independent or dependent? Dependent. So two events. Green marble, again, 7 out of 17. Then a green marble, what does my next fraction look like? So you have, take, you have those things in front of you. Take one green one away. How many green ones you got left? Six. How many total do you have left? 16. See, we had to reduce not only the denominator, but the numerator here also because we took one of those specific ones out. Here we didn't have to do that. There was three yellow, so we used three because we hadn't taken a yellow one away. But once you take the green one away, both of those things change. Now, can I reduce that before I multiply? Yes. And now you can decide, even though you can reduce, maybe you actually don't want to because do you already know what 17 times 16 is? You do. So you could use that and not reduce right now. Just know you need to reduce in the end. Because since I can reduce now, I'd be able to reduce after I multiply. Or you could reduce and then multiply, but that's just new numbers you got to multiply. So totally up to you. We'll just go with not reducing yet, even though we know we could. 17 times 16, we already know what that is. It's 272. 7 times 6 is 42. Then I know I'm not done because i got to reduce it. They're both even, so my numerator can become... 21, my denominator, what's half of 200? 100. What's half of 72? 36. Okay, now can I reduce it anymore? Now only factors of 21 are 3 and 7. So is 136 divisible by 3? No, because 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. Um, is it divisible by 7? No. And if you just think about how you could reduce this, I can't reduce that at all, and it doesn't reduce this way at all. But these are both even, so I could make that 3 over 8, and then I wouldn't be able to go any farther, so really all I can do is reduce them both by 2. That's my answer, 21 over 136. Okay. And remember, make the little blanks for however many events are happening, because if there's, there could be three events, maybe you've got to multiply three things. could be lots of different things. All right, we good so far? All right, so look back at the other page and grab a highlighter. There's just one thing we're going to go back and talk about. And I saved it because there's not examples on the notes. We're going to do a couple on the homework, so I wanted you to I wanted this to come right before that. So this is on the third page where we didn't highlight anything yesterday. Okay, so go after the first ginormous paragraph on the third page and find the words mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. Okay. So mutually exclusive or disjoint, two events are considered mutually exclusive or disjoint if they do not share any common outcomes. Okay, They do not share any common outcomes. So the example they use here 
Uh, well, it says pictorially, this means that the two events do not overlap. So if you're going to draw a Venn diagram like we looked at yesterday, the two circles aren't going to overlap. They're not going to touch each other at all. So getting an even number and getting an odd number. When you roll the die, your number's either even or odd. Could it be even or odd, at, even and odd at the same time? No. So if you can't be those, the two things at the exact same time, that makes you mutually exclusive. All right. So to make sure that you fully get that, we're going to look at two more examples. Um, so let me pass those out. Okay, so look on the back. Ah, shoot. Sorry, I have trouble counting to five sometimes. Um, on the back, the last section of questions, where it starts with number 19, then there's that weird seven next to it. It's because I was actually trying to get the numbers in the right order, and then I left a random seven, so you're just going to have to ignore that. Um, this says, determine if the scenario involves mutually exclusive events. So they're either mutually exclusive or they're not. So we're going to look at 23 and 24. So this says, there are four nickels and seven dimes in your pocket. Two of the nickels and two of the dimes are Canadian. The others are U.S. currency. You randomly select a coin from your pocket. Is it a dime or is it U.S. currency? So we could make these all kinds of crazy wordy um, to where it's real simple but could confuse you. So sometimes it's, it's good to just jot some things down. I know that we have four nickels, nickel, 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 and we have seven dimes, so seven dimes. Let me just list them out. Then it says two of the nickels and two of the dimes are Canadian. So two nickels and two dimes are Canadian. Is it a dime? So if you just randomly select a coin, it is a dime or is it, it is U.S. currency? It's one of the two. Could you be a dime and U.S. currency at the same time? Yes. Okay. So I could get it I, to satisfy this. I could get a dime that's Canadian. I could get a dime that's uh, U.S. currency, or I could get a nickel that's U.S. currency, right? Because there's, it has both of these. This right here, one of these four or one of these five rather, has both of these attributes, dime and U.S. currency. So since you can be both at the same time, that means your little Venn diagram would overlap. So it might look like this. Here's your Canadian money, right? Here's your dimes. Here's your nickels. So I could be Canadian and a nickel. I could be Canadian and a dime. Or I could be U.S. and a nickel, U.S. and a dime, that sort of thing. Everybody okay with that? So then we look at the litter of kittens. Oh, so then our answer is, sorry, maybe I should actually answer it. Um, we just want to know if it's mutu mutually exclusive or not. So since it's, you can be both, it is not mutually exclusive. So I'm going to put NME for not mutually exclusive. Then we're going to look at the kittens. The litter of kittens consists of three gray kittens. So gray, gray gray, two black kittens, and three mixed color kittens. So you randomly pick one kitten. The kitten is gray or it is mixed color. Could you pick a kitten that is gray and mixed color at the same time? No. All right, so then are these events mutually exclusive? Yes. So these are mutually exclusive events because you are one or the other. You cannot be both at the same time. So I just realized my, my little Venn diagram up here, although this works too, it would, I used Canadian because it was in the question, but for it really to talk about U.S. currency in dimes and nickels, this one really should be U.S. in this part, not Canadian. And here, if I was to do a Venn diagram here, these three circles or ovals are going to end up being, they don't intersect at all because you can't be in both at the same time. So if you think of it in terms of a Venn diagram and how would I draw that, if they, have an, if they would have an intersection, they're not mutually exclusive. If they're not going to have an intersection, they are. Easy enough? All right, so let's look at the front because there's just a couple of things that... On one and two, it says to explain your answer, but you really don't have to. You can just put independent or dependent. Because somebody asked me that earlier, and I said, no, you don't have to explain. And then I realized it said explain. So since I've already told somebody no, it's okay. Just independent or dependent is fine. Um, 
on this part right here, and it kind of comes up in another question too, so let's just talk about um, how, you know, whether it's independent, dependent, that sort of thing. If you look right here where it talks about a music class, consists of ninth and 10th graders shown in the table, two students will be selected at the same time. So at, at the same time doesn't mean literally, like I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab two people at the exact same time. That's not what it means. It just means that I'm going to, t I'm not gonna take one person today and use them and then take somebody else the next day, so it may or may not be with replacement. Does that make sense? Um, hey! Um, what, what you're gonna do there, or what this is talking about, is that it, there is not replacement there. I'm, if I'm going to pick two students, it has to be two different students, or it's not two students. Does that make sense? Me picking the same student twice isn't picking two students. All right, so even on something else, it talks about, I don't remember which one it was. Oh, this class project one right above it. Two students will, are chosen for the special project. Well, when I choose two students, I can't, if I, I can't choose Dorlette and then cho choose Dorlette again, because I've really just chosen one student. All right, so I gotta keep her out of the mix when I choose somebody else. So think about that even if it doesn't actually use the words with and without replacement, okay? Questions? Alrighty, then you have the rest of the time to work. You should be able to get a, a lot of this done.